Thanks to Wes Anderson's on-set atmosphere, the cast of Asteroid City formed lifelong friendships throughout the filming process. But that was nothing compared to Maya Hawke's spontaneous dance choreography, Jeff Goldblum's blind walk in stilts, and the chaotic UFO scene that very well could have sparked up a few lawsuits. Wes Anderson has a zany, childlike excitement when it comes to stepping onto his set. Hope Davis has been friends with him for many, many years now, but didn't realize just how much fun he was to work with. Even after, with all these movies under his belt, he still relishes the shooting day, every minute of it. When Wes was working on Rushmore back in the day, Hope was staying in the same hotel as him, working on a different film. So she would visit him Hello. in his hotel room just Hello. to hang out. Now, because this was like well before Spotify and even pre-internet era, finding music for your film was a totally different vibe. He had stacks of records that he was sorting through to find the tracks for Rushmore. This was her first impression of him when it came to making films, so she knew he was passionate, but she didn't know just how much fun he would be to be directed by. It's a rare thing to be in the hands of someone that no matter what they say to you, you're gonna think, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. All the chemistry between actors that you see on set isn't actually just acting. Well, I mean, it is, but a big part of that is by design. He designs uh, an atmosphere where we're living together and we're eating together so we get to know each other. This is a big part of Wes Anderson's set vibe. He doesn't want the actors to have to try too hard. And we become friends and then we become a family and then everything is just organic. That's what everyone says makes him such a great director. He understands actors and how to guide them to their performance in an elegant way. Apparently, Maya Hawke and Rupert Friend were not hired for their dancing skills. Oh, there was no we're hiring you to do because of this. It was um, very... They would have hired other people. They would. <laughs> when they first read the script, the only direction that was written when it came to the musical number was they danced. There wasn't even a rehearsal or a choreographer. It was probably the most spontaneous musical number you'll ever see in any film. It's one of those moments of spontaneity and exuberance that I think make this film such a joy to watch. Adrian Brody has worked with Wes Anderson five times, and Jeffrey Wright has worked with him twice now. Supposedly he did a nude of Mitch Campbell, too. Mitch Campbell. Mitch Campbell. There are several reasons why they keep coming back, but of course, one in particular is how much Wes pushes them From both the as artists. It's a, a privilege and a pleasure to come to set, and this one's no exception. There are dozens of other reused Asteroid City actors in the Wes Anderson world. Probably not. Unless maybe it is. To name a few, Scarlett Johansson, Jeff Goldblum, Tilda Swinton, and Jason Schwartzman. They all keep coming back. Something that might surprise oh, people about being on the set of a Wes Anderson film is that he doesn't prefer to have a lot of people around when shooting scenes, especially considering just how large the cast of Asteroid City is. How can one even achieve something like that? He's just right there. It's the feeling of intimacy in a movie that looks, you know, it's got all these people. One of the major pluses for that type of setting is that Wes doesn't have to raise his voice when directing the actors. He's just okay, right there. Okay, Nobody was ever really on set that didn't have to be there for that specific scene. Something the actors really appreciated about being on set was just how open to interpretation uh -huh. everything was. Whether it be how the dialogue was delivered, the interpretation of said dialogue, or really anything at all the actors wanted to add to the character. Wes Anderson was up for it, and honestly excited about it. That's what he loves about being there, when you describe his onset vivaciousness. That is the thing. Now, obviously, if Wes does have notes about dialogue or what have you, it's usually pretty specific. It might be sometimes you know, he's like, take a little air out of it. But leaves it up to the actor to fill in everything else. All of his projects are very much a collaborative process. Something Maya Hawk learned on the set of this movie was the power of tailoring. Never before in her entire career had she ever had something so well tailored to her than the dress that June wears. The way that I could move in it and, and it changed shape and it could get sweaty. She said she felt so strong in that dress and after wearing it on set, it made her want to go home and get every piece of clothing she owned tailored to fit her. Now, something you might not know is that Rupert Friend actually learned how to lasso for the movie. They didn't really use it a lot for the movie, but he spent many, many hours learning and perfecting the craft. I spent a long time with a rope and a, and a post and a really great guy. Once he got the hang of just the lasso part, he got on the horse and started trying to capture the post with the rope while riding on horseback. And like, even though it didn't really get used for the movie, it was one of his favorite experiences when it came to filming. We all know Scarlett Johansson is a force to be reckoned with on screen, but Jason Schwartzman found himself describing her as some sort of magician. 
When he would do scenes with her, he was watching everything that was going on between and around them, but found himself utterly shocked when watching the movie back. There were these little movements, facial expressions, and subtleties in her acting that he never picked up on during their scenes together, only realizing it all after watching it back. Now, what are some of your favorite Scarlett Johansson films? All right, that UFO scene was one of the most chaotic sequences they shot throughout the entire film. That had to be shot in different pieces over different amounts of time. And it was hectic. And it was hectic. One minute, they'd be working on a specific shot for it, and then Wes would be like, hey, actually, can you run over and shoot this instead? They also had a difficult time trying to direct the kids when it came to looking up at the UFO. Now look up, 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 what's that? What's that? They had to be pretty inventive to get them to look up in a way like they were actually seeing something impressive. And look up, look up. Whoa, what's up there? Is that Mickey Mouse? They also had a chaotic day with all of the machinery and explosions they had to organize. And there's this yeah. massive piece of equipment that our Jolly Grip Sandrine is like yeah. trying not to run people over with. And everyone had to make sure they were right on their mark or else. You have to make sure you stay right on your mark so you don't get decapitated yeah. by a crane. It's giving chaos. And speaking of chaos, let's talk about Jeff Goldblum on stilts in an alien costume. Now, Jeff Goldblum is already a pretty tall guy. Jeff Goldblum's already like a thousand feet tall. Yeah, yeah. And then he's on stilts, so he's then 2,000 feet tall. So, when you think it couldn't get any worse than being on stilts in a constricting alien costume? So he couldn't see anything. Yeah. He was totally blind. <laughs> Obviously, he practiced walking on stilts before getting into the costume, but I can only imagine how scary it would be walking like that when you can't see. Every it's time he finished a, a short walk, we would all stand up and applaud yeah. because we just couldn't believe what he was doing. Okay, so remember how I was talking about Rupert Friend and Maya Hawke's improvised dance scene? Yeah, Rupert was super scared to do that in front of everybody, specifically the cowboys. It was one of those, you know, especially when I found out the rest of the cowboys are all professional musicians. He admires all of them as musicians and couldn't fathom the thought of singing and dancing in front of guys who could eat up his performance for breakfast. A lot of people in this cast that wouldn't have been daunted by that. I wasn't one of them. So yeah, not only did Rupert learn the lasso, he also had to learn lap steel guitar. Dude was literally shaking in his boots performing in front of Maya, who's also a professional musician, and an entire cast of seasoned artists who do this in their sleep. I couldn't give Rupert higher, higher marks. It's clear that the cast of Asteroid City formed strong friendships and a genuine bond throughout the filming process. Because I work in trenches, battlefields, and combat zones. Their shared experiences on and off set contributed to a positive and collaborative atmosphere. And of course, the opportunity to work with Wes Anderson added an extra layer of excitement to the project. What were you most surprised to find out about the set? 